I'm gonna do a quick how-to guide on the Leica M3. I get a lot of questions from friends asking how this thing works, so let's take a look. So most of my buddies that are into photography, like myself, started with a digital camera. And a lot of them today don't even really have a clue of how all this stuff works. But the bottom line is it comes down to three things. Film speed, or ISO, shutter speed, and your aperture. That's it, even the most expensive digital camera on the planet, it comes down to those three things. So it's funny, a couple friends said to me, how does this thing even work? I don't get it. And these are the guys, they take great photos and everything else, but I swear if I gave them a camera and turned all the menus off and just said, you got these three things to change, take a photo, they wouldn't even get their head around it. So I'm gonna go through this here today. It's pretty straightforward, really, there's not much to it but I'll show you how the Leica works and what's going on and some of the, the buttons and features on this camera. And again, it's bare bones. There's no batteries in this thing. There's no light meter on this other than that new one I just put on and reviewed a couple videos ago. But this is the beauty of the Leica M3. Let's look at the lens first. This is a 50 mil Summicron, but they pretty much all work the same, whatever lens you've got on it. When you're grabbing the lens, you've got two options. You can change your aperture, which means you're making the hole bigger or smaller, gathering more light or less light. It's at f2 right now, I'll show you that here in a sec. And you've got the focus. So this being a rangefinder, in your viewfinder, you'll see two images when they're out of focus. And the further out of focus they are, the further apart the images will be. So to focus them, you just turn that focus dial on the lens and they kind of match up and when they're matched up in the viewfinder you know you're in focus and the focus is done with this guy here and you can see how short that is it's about a third of a turn if you grab other lenses your focus throw you can be turning it forever this guy it's about a third from infinity to close focusing is really really quick so that that's definitely a bonus so that's your focus and then your aperture. I'll see if you can see that. So that's the aperture opening and closing. So that's stopping down is right going that way, making it small. And then for the bokeh you, or low light, you wanna open that right up. And this thing throws some beautiful bokeh, that Summicron, legendary, anyway. So on these beauty lenses, you have a distance scale for zone focusing, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Basically, it's got a readout in feet, which is this orangey yellow color, and in meters is white. So if you're looking down at the camera and you figure your subject is, they say, 10 feet away, you can set it at 10 feet, and away you go. Now, if you're shooting at F2, and you're just kind of eyeballing it, you know, if you're out a foot or two, it's gonna be out of focus. But if you stop it down, you've got great light, and you can shoot around F8 or F11, you're probably gonna get a pretty sharp picture because your depth of field isn't the same, so you'll probably get the shot. Uh, guys use that for street photography, especially using a wide-angle lens because your depth of field is so much different than, say, a 50. You're shooting a 28, you know, you can just put it on infinity, stop it down to F11, and everything's in focus. So, um, anyway, that's another story. But anyway, so that's what that's for, and it works pretty cool. And you know what, it, it, if you get good at it, that's a lot of the street shooters just do it that way. And you know, if I'm doing a bunch of landscape stuff, I've just set it to infinity like that, and everything's in focus. Especially, you know, if you're shooting F8 or whatever, if my subject's, you know, 50 feet away or more, which it usually is doing some landscape stuff, everything's in focus. So it's not that critical. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, on to the next one. The shutter speed dial, and it's right on top and it goes from 1,000 of a second all the way down to bulb mode. How bulb mode works is if you have a shutter release cable in here, you can hold that open forever or for an extra couple seconds, whatever you gotta do. You can leave it open all night, do some long exposure night stuff with a locking shutter release cable. So that's bulb, that's one second, that's a half a second. And this little notch here is for a Leica, a very cool mechanical Leica light meter. And then a quarter second, eighth of a second, 15th, 130th, and the next little setting here, the speed at which a Leica M3 can sync with a flash. 
and then we go to 60th of a second, 125th, 250th, 500, and 1000. There's no half stops or any of that, that's it. This is it, full stops, and that's what you get. The lenses on the other hand, this one, has half stops. So you can go between 5.6 and f8. So that's a half stop. But the shutter speeds, they don't. So that's it. Basically, you figured out your what you're shooting. If you got 100 ISO film in here, or let's say you got 400 ISO film in here, you got to do the calcs. This thing's not shooting at 4,000 of a second. So you're limited to what you have to work with. So let's say you've got 400 ISO film in here, and you're out in a bright sunny day, and you want to shoot at f2. That's not going to happen. There's too much light getting in for this shutter speed, which is max at a thousand. You'd probably need like 2,500 or probably no, probably about four thousandth of a second or more. So, if you got an ND filter, you can you can change that up. But realistically, if you got 400 film in there and your bright sunny day, you're shooting at f8 or f11 in around there, and that's kind of what you got to deal with. So, there's a little more to it than. Than just pointing and shooting obviously and that's what makes it fun so this is your film advanced lever and your caulking lever does it all at the same time and each time you take a shot and you gotta love that sound you have to caulk it it pulls another frame across caulks it and you're ready to go and these guys are all brass you can see it's starting to get some patina on the end there I don't know if you can see that anyway so that's that pretty sweet to get film out of this thing you click this guy to rewind the film. You put him over there and it releases it, just kind of like uh, on other film cameras where there's a little button on the bottom. And then you can start cranking this stuff out. You pull this up and you wind it over, wind, 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 until you hear it. You can actually hear it and feel it. There's no tension and you can hear it in, on the spool and then it's safe to open the back up. Another awesome feature of the M3 is the self-timer. I use it all the time. It's great for long exposures. You don't have to bring a shutter release cable. And it's also great for selfies if you want to jump in the shot. It's very cool. It's very simple to use. And I'll show you how that's done. Just cock it. Crank this little guy over here. and spring loaded. Again, all mechanical. Beauty. And it has a little button here. So it's ready to go. You just hit the button. You can hear it. It sounds like an old tractor. And I believe it counts down to about 10 seconds or so. I've never timed it. There you go. The first click is the shutter release. And the second one, I believe, is the self-timer resetting itself. Pretty cool. So this lever here, it activates the 135 millimeter frame lines inside the viewfinder. The Leica M3 is set up so beautifully for the 50 mil lens and the view, looking through the viewfinder is just amazing. It's just so, it's just an awesome experience. And I've had some upgrades done to it, but it's just an amazing thing. This is what it looks like looking through the amazing viewfinder of an M3. Uh, those frame lines are the 50 millimeter frame lines. And that lever on the front, I'll get it here if I can get it. There you go. That shows you the 135 millimeter frame lines. So standard is 50, and when you put a 90 on it, the 90 frame lines automatically pop up. But if you want to look at the 135 frame lines, and just to get your head around it, you just hit that lever on the front. Cool. So let's look on the back here. And what you have on the back is, this is a film speed reminder dial. You push this in, a little spring-loaded guy, and you can see this changes to what film speed you have. So you know what, it's kind of a good reminder. Um, it's not as simple as like the back of that Canon AE-1 where you just put a hunk of the paper in the back. But you can use this because you know what, with film a lot of times you put it in there, you shoot a half a roll, and then you know months can go by before you shoot it again, you don't know what you got in here. On the Leica M3 there's no window showing you what film you have in there. So you gotta kinda remember, or you could set this guy. So this is DIN and ASA. ASA is on the outside. Then you got to remember that you did set it. It's old school. Um, those other two guys there, this is, these pop out. And that is a sync contact for the electronic flash. So you can do that. Or this has got a contact for a flash bulb in that one. 
So that's what those two are. So pretty much that's it on the back. This door flips open, we'll show you that. And that's how you get at the film by popping off the bottom plate. So on the bottom of the Leica M3, you have these two guys here. This one is a little lever that pops out. And you just turn it to take the bottom plate off. And this is for your tripod mount. And I've put a reducer in there because the one, the standard Leica tripod mount screw, it's a big honking thing. So, so here's the back again, and this opens up. And there is your curtain right there. Watch it go. I'll go to half a second. That's your shutter curtain. So that's it. Now just stuff it full of film and get out there. Thanks for watching.